We're going live. We're live at last. We're live. Hello. We've got Boy, that was hard work. Fruit seller, but nice to get for breakfast. Good morning from Cambodia. Good morning from Cambodia. We're out here on the streets here. We're sorry if you've seen a few attempts. For some reason, the uh, live stream kept failing. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Now, we had a little bit of a problem last night, didn't we? <laughs> Over right. dinner. In that... Um, Bernie decided that he was going to take over the workshop and Bernie. run his own workshop here on street photography uh, in Cambodia. So we thought we'd better attend this new workshop. <laughs> Bernie, can you just tell us what you're, you're doing on your new photo tour? Yeah, yeah, what are you doing on your new photo tour? Well, I thought it was an opportunity for, for Mike and Simon to come down and discover the real Cambodia. They've been taking us all around these these tourist spots but you know this is where all the action is right so, so we're down at a temple and there's lots of flowers being available to the locals and what they're doing is purchasing the flowers taking it as offerings um to the buddha um <laughs> Buddhist, the big Buddha, the, big the Buddhist Buddha. temple. Okay. Uh, oh, over, over there. Over behind, okay. over my right shoulder. Right. Can you get that? Swing around. Well, yeah, yeah. You see, now I was just wondering because I thought that doesn't look much like a temple. No, I thought, what, Bernie? What does the temple look like? A market? No, the market's outside the temple. Oh. You, you need to be. You need to observe your environment, mate. Oh, okay. You know, sorry. You can't sorry. just sort of rush in and go. There's no yeah. temple here. It's over the fence. Mate. Okay. So what yeah. aperture should I use for a temple? Well. Um, I'm actually not sure on that one because I'm taking flower photos. So, oh, I see. Yeah, so would okay. you like to look what I've been taking? Yes, and I please. I sort of share that with yeah, you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, what we're going to be doing, guys, is having a little look at what you asked for right at the beginning. And that was a few hints and tips on street photography. Lots of you said, is it okay to take street photography here? If you think you've seen from the thumbnail there, I just walked up to a complete stranger, said good morning, okay to take your photo, and got a very close-up shot. Let's just... Oh see if I can turn this round and let our instructor just show you what we got. Hang on, here we go. What do we got here then, Bernie? Well, they, these are some of the subjects that are available here and um, what we find, well, what I'm finding is I can go and try different apertures. The flowers are sitting there. No one's concerned about it. Yeah. Um, and we're just taking photos. Boy, that one's a bit dark, so I can change my settings, reshoot, shoot, and yeah, it's a great way of learning. That's really great. Yeah, Thank so you. Thank you for bringing us. Yeah, not a No, it's great. Right. Yeah. Bernie, yeah. Bernie, what shutter speed should I be on? What, what would you like to, what would your image like to end up? What, what do you see in your image? How do you want it to look? Well, I, I can't help you with that. <laughs> <laughs> <I don't. laughs> but what I'd suggest, you go out there and practice, practice. and try different apertures and you might find the, the image you're looking for. There's plenty Fantastic. of subjects here. Fantastic. <laughs> these boys are so funny because they're really giving me a hard time about this. Because I had planned to go out by myself on the last day and then suddenly it's been, you know, we've got a, a group, which is great. <laughs> But they don't want to help us. They left us on our own. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the stick we've been giving Bernie and everyone else yeah, for the way. whole week. You know, yeah. like, what aperture should I use? Well, what do you want the shot to look like? Da, da, yeah. da, 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 da. And I think part of the workshop has been fantastic. The locations you've taken us to where we can play around and just work it and feel comfortable playing around. You know, people are so friendly and they're not worried about, you know, having a uh, someone standing in front of them taking a photo. They're enjoying mm. it. Yeah, um, they are. And certainly from my personal side, I've had a, had a great workshop and the last, the last two and a half days I've been running in manual mode, totally. And I mean, previous to the workshop, I'd only have a look at it and think, no, that's way too hard. So certainly a great learning and having the subjects here, it, and you know, it's just so easy. Like the flowers here, you know, we can spend an hour here just on, mm. you know, and learn so much. Mm. Can, you, can, can, you, can you tell me... You've been obviously been on other workshops at all, yeah. uh, you know, before. Can you tell me, is there a difference between what we've done and other workshops that you've been on in the past? Yeah, I guess the biggest thing is, is I've taken out compared to other workshops is that um, you guys have shown us that have a look at the environment, have a think about what we want the image to look like rather than rushing in and taking photos. So that, that's a big thing and giving us the time to review them 
and given us some constructive criticism or feedback, not criticism, feedback and suggestions. So and you think the, well, workshop, the, the workshops in between are helpful? In between? They're all That's helpful. image processing. We do a morning I, session in the... Yeah. I don't want this to turn into a testimonial session, guys, but it's very no, kind of you. you know, well, you offered me 50% off my next tour. Shh, shh, <laughs> you said you wouldn't mention it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been great. We've had lots of great sessions and lots of, lots of fun. It's been a, been a great, oh, great cool, workshop. Great. So, so I might head off and get some flowers because soon they'll be opening the balloons. And I'll can, you give us some street, can you give us some street photography tips? Yeah, just... Walk down this road, mate. Oh, have right. a have a look around. You know, yeah. pan around, and have a look. Okay. You know, All right. You grab what you want. There's motorbikes. Okay. Look, here's a truck full of um, coconuts. Full of coconuts. Full of coconuts. Yeah. Coconuts. yeah. Okay. Let's go have a walk around. Let's see what we can see and what we can find. Look over here. Yeah, there's stuff going, going on all the time. When we said to Bernie last night, we were just fooling around. Said, so Bernie, tell us about street photography. How are you going to do this? He said. He said, well. I've got my camera, I'm in the street, I'm going to do some photography. <laughs> You're a good, good man, you. mate. Good All on right, you, mate. Catch you later. <laughs> oh, cheers, Bernie. Yeah, don't forget the meeting point, you know. You've yeah, only got an point. hour here. Back here. We've been doing this to the guys all week. This is such fun. Right, let's get a bit more serious now. Uh, the question that most people asked was, is it safe to do street photography in Cambodia? Well, let's just go and have a look around and see what's happening. Let's just follow the guys a little bit. I'm going to turn this around and show you where we are. So this is a, a market. It's a flower market. Um, but they also sell, there's, 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 there's birds in cages, which are, uh, they're released. It's a Buddhist thing about releasing birds and, and spirits flying, I guess. People come to do that. Um, there's loads of flowers and things. There's lots of people sitting around. Um, why start being serious now? Yes, I know. I'm sorry. I can't be serious for long. Don't worry. I am me. Hey, look. We got uh, we got crazy Greggy here. <laughs> Hello, Greg. Morning. Morning. So he's come to have a look. So let's see. You know, I mean, look. You see, there's a shot there, and you can see how close I've got the camera to this lady. You know, nobody seems to be worrying very much. It's completely, completely cool to do street photography. Look at this lady over here. I don't know if she's still moving. You've got to move quickly. She was just kind of preparing some water. Look, look, see? Isn't that awesome? We've got some lovely shots. Look, and then you get the water coming down. And then you just kind of move. And you can start trying different angles with your shots. You see, nobody really minds what you're doing. And then we could get a close-up something like this you see this is the hello 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 how are you <laughs> you see nobody here really minds they're just such lovely friendly people and you can have fun as well you know you really can you can have quite a laugh hello hello <laughs> look at this lady here putting flowers on the you see look what a cool shot Okay, I know I'm doing this with a selfie stick and a phone, but you see, nobody minds. Nobody reacts strangely. Akun. Akun. Oh, beautiful, yes. Wow. Kamui. In a minute, I, yes, I'm busy, and then come back. Okay. Sorry, what, somebody just put up a question and asked me something, but I couldn't see it because I was very busy just speaking to the lady because it's really important to be polite to people you know when you're doing these things what sort of flowers I, I don't know I'm sorry Grant I've no idea I can't answer that one at the moment I'm going to stick on theme because you know how easily distracted I am this fella here having a good old yawn <laughs> she's just seen me point the camera at him and look at the reaction it's like yeah, there's not a lot to worry about, really, is there? <laughs> How are you doing there, uh, Greg? Oh, oh, I've done it wrong! The number of times I've done that. I would have thought after a week you'd be able to tell us apart. Yeah, I know, but it's like you Aussies... He's the ugly one. He's the ugly one. Yeah. You Aussies all look the same to me. <laughs> what ugly. Now, <laughs> 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 going well, mate. Oh, Great man. Spot. Glad you, uh, Glad I'm, you I'm suggested this. <laughs> Oh dear, it's just been a week of absolute tomfoolery really, hasn't it? Come on, let's have a look at some more shots. 
I wish you would use your camera kit in this stream. Yeah, I can't. I can't hold the film camera, do the sound, hold my Fuji and all that stuff. It's, it's, it's not really doable, I'm afraid. But what I will do is I will follow Simon and show you what he's doing. But I haven't got enough arms and legs to, to use my own cameras to do this. Do I use any auto settings when shooting street? Yeah, absolutely. <coughs> because, I'll turn around a bit so you can see the background. Yeah, absolutely, I would use an auto setting because here's the thing. It's happening fast, right? Things are, are going quickly. You may not have time to sort of fiddle around with aperture shutter, etc. So, I mean, most of the time I shoot in aperture priority and uh, I just quickly whiz my ISO or my aperture up and down accordingly so I can get the shot quickly. In fact, I shoot in, an, in, in aperture priority almost all the time. It's very, very rare I use anything else. Has anyone else got any questions on this one? And then we'll get stuck in a bit closer and see if we can get some tips off Simon. And Simon's a good guy to get tips off about street photography because he's been doing it for many years professionally. Do many of the people have a problem with you shooting pictures? No, Steve, if you were watching a moment ago, you would have seen how people react to the camera. You watch it back in the playlist, you'll see. Um, Let's have a look. I'm going to get Simon to do us a few little tips, okay? But yeah, I mean, I would. I, where is he? Simon? <clears throat> the guys are saying to me, I wish you'd use your camera, but I can't do the video and use my camera. Yeah. Can I just follow you and get you to do a couple of tips sure. for the guys? Sure. That's right, sure. drink your coffee yeah, for a yeah, minute. Yeah, have yeah, a swig on your coffee and. Come this way. Come walk this way. Yeah, walk this way. this way. Okay, we're going to walk this way. Um, I've forgotten. Got an admirer, mate. Got a oh. oh, Greg, mate. You Hello, shouldn't Martin. have. You <laughs> shouldn't <laughs> have. That's kind of. <laughs> Get off. Cheers, <laughs> buddy. This is Sharon. Oh, for Sharon. He's after Simon's wife now. <laughs> I can't tell you what he said the other day. <laughs> Right, let's go and get some tips for you. Now, Simon's a good guy to get these sorts of tips from because remember, he was a commissioned lifestyle and street photographer for both Corbis and Getty Images for many, many years. Simon has spent 15, 17 years in Asia shooting street photography. So he's actually in a much better place to give you tips on this than I am because he really knows the place. Where are we? Right, okay. Hang on, let's get Mr. Taplin. Okay. Wow. Street photography? Street photography. Okay, tips on how to. Well, it's just uh, it's it's all about getting a sense of your environment. You know, it's uh, getting a feel of the place. It's um, letting locals into their space. So it's not just running in and charging in and pointing a camera in someone's face. And uh, there's lots of these genres where people surprise people and just run up to people, poke a camera in their face and provoke a reaction and it's it's very it's very I, intrusive it's very it's rude. very intrusive and you're not going to get a natural yeah. reaction yeah. you might get a startled reaction or something yeah. Yeah. it's not a natural reaction it's about giving a bit of yourself and investing a little bit of time with the people that's right and getting them comfortable in your space and then they to let them into the so space much more. yeah so it's you know I, I i'll sit on a street corner for a few minutes and get some interaction with the people, they let you in, and, and, and they feel comfortable mm. talking. I mean, let's, let's try it here. Let's, let's try it some. here. Okay, I'm yeah. just gonna... They might be buying a couple of birds down here as we do. Let's, I'm gonna turn yeah. the camera around and see if I can hold the sound. What lens do you use for street photography? What lens do you use uh, for street photography, you said, Bob? Hang on. I, I like a 35. I mean, people say uh, a 50 millimeter is, is more your natural eye, but I think it's a little bit wider, about 35 millimeters. I think that's a good what your eye sees. And yeah. uh, a lot of the famous street photographers like Cartier-Bresson, they worked on a 35 for yeah. pretty much of all of the. It's a good discipline working with one lens sometimes, just to really understand the characteristic of that lens. Just work with it, stick with it. Uh, keep it on all day, don't change it. And, yeah. and then you really understand the lens and you understand its capabilities and what it can do mm. and what it can't do. So it's a good discipline. Work with a lens for one day or two days and uh, just don't change it. Show us a few, you, uh, oh sorry, you're still drinking your coffee, mate. Right. I'm gonna say, are you up for, there's a nice little shot just down there, but um, the one you have on is the best lens. I totally agree, yeah. 
longer lens is more discreet, but then you don't get any interaction between yourself. You know, you, if you've got a short lens and you're close to somebody, then you are getting a much more intimate reaction with that person. So yeah, using a long lens can kind of help your courage factor perhaps because you're further away and you might not feel quite so scared. But when you're close to someone, it is a much more personal look. And they have to interact with you. And that is where the magic of street photography can happen. So here we go. I'm going to turn this around. And I, I don't know how to do this yet. She's gone. She's gone. She's been taken up. Let's find something. Wherever you think. Well, I'm just going to follow you, Simon, and I'll catch up with you. Let's go over here to the temple. Let's stay, let's stay here if we can. To stay around here, okay. I think it's probably better. So it's a we stay with the market. These guys moving stuff. Okay. So, yeah, we're here. We've been here enough to kind of like just grab some shots. Just yeah. I'm just going to follow you. You just look for shots. Don't worry, mate. No great hurry. Look. So here we go. I'm just going to let. How much? Right. So look. If you just watch how Simon's working. You've got to realise that I know you can't hear what he's saying because the mic's not long enough. But you see what he said about creating a relationship. Hey, uh, this is really important. He's just going to buy... Hang on, Simon. They won't be able to hear you. I'm going to... The mic's too far away. So, you see, this is how important... Right, there we go, you see. So it's straight in. You see what we were just saying about getting close, getting intimate? Yeah, so 35. I, I like a 35 because I can get a bit of... I can get close to the person and, and get that interaction. It's it's about it's about gaining the trust of the person. It's about them letting you into their space. That's what it's all about. Uh, and then uh, you know we the, the magic happens. So she's busy with a breakfast at the moment, but <laughs> yeah. I'll see if I can. Uh get some interaction with her at the moment. Okay. Difficulties with street photography here is actually which shots not to take um, because there's so much happening all around all the time and as you've seen it is so so easy to shoot in this environment and with these beautiful people. There really isn't a difficulty if somebody doesn't want their picture taken they would just simply pop their hand up and go no no it's all it's, it's fine. We in the West have this ridiculous, ridiculous paranoia about having our photo taken, and people can be quite aggressive about it. I have no idea why. I really don't understand it. I'm sorry, I just don't get it. Um, but no, if somebody doesn't like it out here in Asia, they'll just quietly say, oh, no, thank you. But there you go. Most of them will just allow you straight into their personal space. Simon, can we yeah. see the shot you just took, do you think? I'm still working on it. Give me two seconds. All right, okay. I'll come back to you. This is also another aspect. Simon just said, I'm still working on it. Give me two seconds. Because, now look how close he is. Simon said, give me two seconds. I'm still working on it. Because this isn't about grab and run. This is about creating the relationship and letting, you know, just keep working with it. Just kind of get in. Yeah, you see, she's, she's, she's laughing. I can, she's, she's a little uncomfortable with it. I get it. But she's completely okay with it, and trust me, she would say at any point, no, no, if she's had enough. Also trying different angles. So look, Simon has now moved around here, and he's now shooting back from this angle. Let's look over his shoulder, see if you can see. He's got some... It's not going she's having a breakfast. It's not going too well at the moment. So. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, it's it, you know. You have to be very 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 patient to do street photography it really isn't a snap and run oh i was about to run through greg's shot here we go it's about keeping your eyes open and watching what happens hang on let me just have a look simon this is working that 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 that, that didn't work um that but, did. but, but, but this is kind of working here i'm using the flowers to frame in to create leading lines um into this young lady here and it's, it's a beautiful setup. Um, we've got some oops, beautiful flowers, um, beautiful model. Um, somebody just asked about what mode to shoot in. It doesn't matter. Shoot in the mode you like best. I and Simon. Simon, what mode are you shooting in? Um, I'm in manual. Okay. Um, <clears throat> again, there's, there's no right or wrong of what you want to shoot in. You, you have to decide. 
you know, what is your priority. If it's a moving subject, then shutter is going to be your priority. If you want to focus on a detail, like I wanted to photograph on this flower here. Hang on, I'm turning it around. I can't see the flower. <laughs> and I wanted her soft in the background, then um, aperture would be my priority. Um, <coughs> so, so, yeah, so let, let me just do one with, I can't do this so it's on a 35, so I can't do, show a shallow depth of field. That's for another tutorial, but there's no right or wrong. You have to decide what is your priority. Is it sharpness or is it depth of field? And then you decide what mode to shoot in. Absolutely. It is, there isn't a right and there isn't a wrong with anything in photography. Cameras and software, they're just boxes of tools with many ways to reach wherever you want to go. How about underexposing a quarter stop? Why? That's the only question. Why? Why underexpose quarter of a stop? Why not just get the exposure bang on? Um, there's an awful lot of, I'm afraid I'm going to call it arse water, talked about settings and things. Settings are so unimportant compared to your way of thinking, your way of shooting. I'm just going to move back a bit and see where Simon is. This is about street photography again. We've been here for like half an hour. We, haven't, we, we just came here, just looked and observed. We didn't come in blazing with cameras and people, they gain your trust, they let you into the space. And it's just so easy to walk around. No one's phased me taking their pictures. Yeah. And, you know, we've already... Simon, have you got another shot? People would like to see a shot. If you've got another one, you can quickly show. Hang on, let me just turn the camera around. Hang on. So, uh, I like the repeating patterns here. The redness of the, the flowers here. And then the uh, her lipstick there. And again, this is depth of field. I wanted to focus on her, so I, I chose to make the flower soft and focus in on her. Or, alternatively, you could do it the other way around. There's no right or wrong. I could, make, I could make the flower sharp and her soft in the background. So aperture is very subjective. Um, so, you know, don't let, there is no set aperture. There is no, you know, this is what you use. It's absolute nonsense. Absolutely. It's, I mean, absolute ap aperture, as most controls on a camera, aperture, has both a, a, a functional exposure use, but it also has a creative use, you know? All the settings on a camera can be used creatively, and the creativity comes out of you, not the camera. So like, you choose the aperture according to how you want the shot to look. Do you want a lot of depth of field? Do you want a soft foreground and a soft background? Do you want lots of sharpness? You ask yourself those questions, and that will tell you what aperture to use. Look at this. this hang on, hang on, Simon. Simon's just pointing something out. Sorry. Look at this. Look at these lotuses here. It's beautiful. I'm going to use the foreground here. I'm going to come across the foreground, and then use this to, as a leading line coming into this young lady here. And uh, yeah, she's, she's more than up for it. She's yeah. very happy. Look, just posing for the camera. <laughs> and I didn't even ask her. Let's have a look. Here we go. Hang on. Beautiful. Here we go. And um, yeah, she's just arrived. And uh, she's just led us into her space already. It's yeah. fantastic. It's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. Now, okay, one of the questions would be, how did you control the background? Because as you can see, there's a motorcycle right behind where this lady was. Well, look at the light. Learn to look at light. Stop being caught up in fears of what people will say or do and concentrate on the photography. So the lady was just there in shade. Where's the bike? It's in the sun, isn't it? So what do you need to do? Ask yourself these questions. Right. What do you need to do? Go on, somebody throw up a solution. I'd love to just see. What would you need to do to make the bike very secondary? Yeah, I like the person in the background as well. Exactly, Bernard Lim. You expose for the lady, the background will overexpose a bit and burn out, and therefore it makes... Yeah, the lady, the subject. Hang on, there's you can a. See, there's a motorbike there. I, 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 I framed her. I saw the bike in the background. I'll probably crop into it, but I used her to cover the bike in the background. And you can't see it. Yeah. Yeah, and it's blown out. I exposed for her, and the background's blown out. Absolutely. Should we have a look, see if there's anything else? I'm just following Simon around. But no, he's a real good man to show you this stuff. He was a. Uh, 
you know, he had to produce sort of, I don't know. Simon, how many lifestyle stock images did you used to have to produce when you were shooting stock continuously? Um, we were producing, well, we probably produce about 10,000 a year. Okay. Um, so each shoot day would be a minimum take rate of 50 selects per day. So that's involved with models and um, big setup, uh, maybe, yeah, it's uh, about 50 yeah. selects a day. So that means you, it's probably about 5% of what you shoot. So, you know, you, you're talking about 1,000 images a day you're shooting and take rate. You told ten, me ten, once yeah. that a huge amount of your stuff was shot as live as well. As? As live. As live in... Without the models and without the... Yeah, 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 totally, totally. But yeah, it's you, it's uh, quite a lot of work. It's, um, you know, you're yeah. under no, sorry, intense no, sorry. pressure. The question wasn't about the stock, it was about, yeah, your, the lifestyle photography that you used to shoot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. now go on, show us some more pics. Okay. Simon, of course, is concentrating on what he's doing and he can't really hear what I'm saying because I'm quite a way away. Let's have a look. Well, I'm, any... I'm, I'm sticking around here. Sometimes it pays to stay in a place and not move around so much because things develop um, so we've already gained the trust of this lady here and I'm, I'm just going to sit around here just for a little minute and, and see what happens because it's yeah it's happening it's building up you know other people are coming in there's more lotus flowers coming um, you never know what's going to happen so you know rather than miss something if you see something that has the potential to develop it's, it's worth staying and, and waiting and staying in the same spots not rush around too much sometimes the less is more you know if you see something just get that moment in time that decisive moment uh, and also it's part as, as well as building the trust thing it's about um, finding a great little pool of light somewhere where the lights working and then you stay there and wait for something to happen it's not about rushing around at high speed and going click 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 it's about looking for a great pool of light. We've got a great pool of light here. It's under this tree and we've got shade so the people look great. We've got bright light over here so any light coming in this direction, the movement like this direction, is going to be frontal lighting and look awesome. So it's about finding that awesome little pool of light as we have and then you wait for something to happen in it. It's not about rushing around just poking cameras willy-nilly in someone's face. Somebody, I saw a question pop up just now. Somebody said, um, when would you not expose for the subject? My answer to that would be, when you don't want to see them. <laughs> it's like, why would you not expose for the subject? Ask yourselves these questions, because it's amazing what you know if you just trust yourself. Has anyone else got any questions? Well, we're just waiting to see if anything else kicks off or what happens. I'm just going to change hands on the camera because my right arm is slowly going to sleep. Oh, that's better. Look at this guy. Look, here's a load of stuff arriving. How's the weather today? It's getting pretty warm. Tony Edwards think that was sarcasm. Uh, you mean about the when you don't want to see them comment? Yes, it was. I mean, I'm sorry, I couldn't help that one. But it's true. You know, if you think about these things, when would you not expose for the subject? If it's the subject of your picture, then you would expose appropriately for that subject. When does the workshop end? It ends today. We're going to be going back in a short while. We do a, a you know an image processing session most days where we all look at each other's pictures because it's fascinating to see the shots that everybody takes in the same place with the same material because everybody sees things differently and it's a big peer-to-peer -peer learning thing but yes it ends today so you know, some guys bringing, here you go, some guys bringing in some stuff so I'm going to move back so you can see how Simon's positioning himself now he's shooting against the light Somebody also asked, why am I not wearing my headband? It's because when we arrived, it's, uh, we, we, were, we got out of the hotel about a quarter to seven this morning. 
and it wasn't quite so warm. It's getting warmer by the minute. And I'm starting to run a bit, but I can't put my headband on whilst I'm filming with you guys. So here we go. You see how Simon's positioning himself? You know, the guy is just carrying on completely naturally. And that's one of the reasons I love, 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 love coming to Asia. Hakun. <laughs> Hakun is thank you. And I just said thank you because the guy was about to walk in front of my camera and uh, ha ha ha, are there any rules to photography? <laughs> no. <laughs> the guy just was about to walk in front of my camera, spotted it and just immediately moved back around. Everyone's a brilliant model there. You are so right. This is why I love this country, why I love the whole of Asia, because, you know, it's easy. In America, if you got that close to someone, they'd... Yeah, they would. What's the matter with America and the UK? Why, why are they so paranoid? What is there that's so secret? You know, why are we so paranoid in our societies? What are you doing with that camera? Why are you trying to photograph me? Get that camera out of my face. What's that all about? Where does that fear come from? It's just, I'm sorry, in my opinion, utter, utter madness. We're all just human beings doing what we're doing. Look at these people walking through here. You see the market's starting to wake up a bit and people are starting to come through. Oh, hello, yeah, okay. The man saying our tuk-tuk's arrived. The Western culture sucks. Well, it has its good bits, but I do think we are fed a totally unnecessary diet of fear and bad news continuously. Because, you know, our brains are programmed to look out for danger. That's a caveman thing. News companies and the media have recognised that, you know, programs like the world's worst serial killers and uh, it's not going to rain next week it's going to be torrential flooding it means they get more viewers they sell more advertising space but slowly that fear sort of permeates into our own minds and then we get scared of each other you know this doesn't happen in asia and notice no one's scared of each other everyone's just friendly and they get along beautifully i'm just going to show you what simon's doing because this is a really cool thing look look He's just holding the camera in the air above the lady. Look, and just not looking through it, he's just shooting down. Just to see what happens. Something's happened. Look, hang on, let's have a look. Hang on, Simon, can you move your hand? Yeah, sorry. It's a bit hit and miss. Hang on, mate, you need a microphone. It's a bit, sorry, tilt the camera down a bit. There we go. Yeah, it's a bit hit and miss, but sometimes it's about the happy accident. You know, sometimes you can consider, but it's that moment in time where you can't control and it's yeah it's just the magic happens so yeah just we're so used to looking at pictures from our level it's good to explore from bird's eye view and worm's eye view from underneath so don't just look at eye level look up look down look all around you yeah absolutely um someone said have i got a mirrorless camera yeah i have i shoot with the fuji xt1 most of the time Simon used to shoot with a mirrorless a lot of the time, but he's using his Canon because you've got... What's that lens you're using? It's... Hang on, hang on. I'm going to turn the camera around. Because you've got a thing about... Um, oops. Lenses at the moment, haven't you? Yeah. What are you shooting on there? Well, I've, I've picked these. Um, these are old Russian prime lenses. Um, you can find them on eBay. Um, there's a Helios... It's called a Helios 422. Um, and they were made by Carl Zeiss. Um, during the Cold War, Carl Zeiss was split up um, um, and um, West Germany and East Germany after mm. the division, and Zeiss was split up. So uh, Zeiss still remained in, uh, remained in East Germany. It was Zeiss Jena, um, but they still had the technology from Zeiss, and they made these beautiful kind of prime lenses, and you can pick them up really cheap on eBay, um, but they have these characteristics where they flare a lot. Some people don't like it. I personally quite like it. Um, but they're manual lenses. Uh, and you can pick them up for like $30. They're cheap. It's a screw-on lens. You might need to get an adapter for your DSLR. It's an M42 to EOS or M42 to, to Nikon. And, um, yeah, they're a lot of fun to work with. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, that's another thing we have a rant about, about modern lenses. They're too sharp sometimes, yeah, they're yeah. too sharp. That's why Modern I lenses like are too sharp. Everybody seems to be hung up on sharp. When you look at a big LCD 4K TV, I think it just hurts your eyes to look at. Why in God's name did you buy one of those? Yeah. And, you know, there is a whole 
a lot of people these days that are softening their lenses with Bebo. We aren't going to go into that whole story yeah, at the moment. Right. But, 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 but yeah, basically, I'm going I, to find, be... I find modern lenses too sharp for my personal style of photography. So I like to, you know, play around with what's available on the market at a very affordable price and great quality and a very organic look. Absolutely. I'm going to be doing a video about a couple of lenses I've got. Any of you guys who are with me in Iceland will remember I smashed my favourite lens and I had to buy something else which was considerably more expensive. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's so going on eBay and I will do a little YouTube yeah. video about why and just uh, and show again, you some stuff. It's how you use it. It's not the amount of money you pay for a lens that's going to make your pictures better. It's, exactly. Um, it's, it's how you use it. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, this is $30 on eBay and it's a brilliant... It's a Carl Zeiss technology. It's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. That's why uh, Simon's shooting on the DSLR. But it's because he likes that cheap lens. There's a video of Simon shooting uh, members of the, I think it was the Singapore Philharmonic. Yeah. And uh, I like flare. I like flare in lens. It's, it's, it's a very emotive feel. I mean, you don't think, oh, shoot into the sun. You know, learn the rules and break the rules. That's what it's all about. Totally, totally. There's a little video somewhere kicking around. I don't know where it is, but uh, it's of... Mr. Taplin here shooting the, 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 in, a, in, a, in a rice field or something and he's rolling around in the mud on the ground trying to get his shot and he's getting more and more frustrated because he can't get, can't get he, lens flare. I he, could not get he, it. he can't get lens flare. Everybody's yeah. going, oh no, it's bad, wicked and wrong. So here you got a guy who works for Corbis Getty and all this sort of stuff forcing lens flare. In fact, in the video, he just rips his lens hood off and he just throws it in anger across yeah. this field trying to get the bloody lens flare. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So anyway, I guess we've pretty much come to the end here. We've been online now for quite a long time. We've been going for over half an hour. The tuk-tuk man is here, I think. Yeah, he's waiting for us. Time to get back for the workshop. So we've got to go back. We're going to be... I'm working up a bit of a sweat. Yes, yeah, so am I, mate. So am I. I haven't got my Rambo band on. It's... Hang on. Just... Can you hold that? Yeah, please? sure. My Rambo band, when it's not around my head, it lives around my wrist. So I can A, go like that to get rid of some sweat. And when it's really bad, I chuck it around my head. I just wear it. So I look good. <laughs> We're going back to the hotel. This is the last day of our workshop. Um, we, we do a little you know, image review and stuff. This is going to be the last one this morning. So we've got to get back to meet the guys. And then at midday today, Cambodia time, it kind of ends. Some people are flying back. But... Uh, Thank you very much for joining it's been us. It's a great week. And thank you for joining us on yeah. the live streams. It's been and, great uh, fun doing it. It was a big fear thing for me because I'm not great with tech and a couple of times it's gone wrong. Apologies last night. Um, we were filming. No, it wasn't. It was yesterday afternoon when we were filming with the sticky rice lady and the signal just kept coming and going and it broke. So anyway, have a great day wherever you are in the world. And thank you so much for coming to have a look. And I hope you enjoyed a few tips from a master of street photography. Thank you. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. See you later.